Ciao comrades, today we got something a little bit different. I came across this video that claims that you should stay away from Vita in 2024. We'll be looking at it and we'll be analyzing it. We'll be using our critical thinking and empirical senses. So let's get into it. First, I want to say this is not a hate video. If you feel hate inside of you, please go and sort it out first before watching because if you feel hate, that means something is wrong with you. So let's start to watch the video. You can find the link for it down below. But as I said, no hateful comments or I'll kick your ass. So he begins with talking about rumors about PS Vita's successor and that PS Portal doesn't count as one, which I think we can all agree with. Rumors are still just rumors, I haven't been real talking about them, but I believe Sony would have to be crazy not to come out with handheld now when it's all in bloom, booming, and Sony is many things, but they are not crazy, I'm sure about that. Then he moves on to talk about the design and physical controls, he likes the shape, but he doesn't like the action buttons. Let's use our empirical senses for this. So he starts off with saying that design is okay, which I agree with. 3DS design is not really like, you know, comfortable. This is way more comfortable. The controls then he says uh, the, it's, uh, the buttons are clicky and they have sharp edges. No, they are not really sharp edges, but I mean, they're not going all the way in. On the PSP, clearly the buttons are... The surface area is much larger, but I would say they are, I would say they stick out about the same distance from the, you know, body, but PSP got buttons go all the way in, whereas Vita buttons not going all the way in, so it might, you know, feel like there are sharp edges, but I never actually have problem with this when playing the games, you know. When I compare it like this, you know, pressing it, yeah, okay, I can give it to to these two. Vita buttons are a bit less uh, comfortable. But he somehow omitted D-pad, you know, like Vita has the best D-pad out of mm, these three, in my opinion. Uh, PSP D-pad is not really better, that's for sure. And uh, 3DS D-pad is also quite good. It's positioned like down, so you have to shift your grip. And it ho then, uh, you know, it holds weirdly. Yeah, I, uh, there is nothing to grip in here, so it's a bit weird, but it's not bad. Still, I would say D-pad on the Vita is the best. Then uh, let's talk about the joysticks. He said... Uh, it's terrible. Comparing this to other handhelds, it's a joke. I take the 3DS circle pad over this, and I do not like the circle pad. I mean, Vita joysticks uh, leaves a lot to be desired, that's for sure. But uh, PSP circle pad and uh, DS uh, circle pad, that's basically the same thing. Uh, it's little, on the 3DS there is a little bit less uh, resistance. And it has this nice rubber top. But other than that, that's pretty much the same thing, you know. He says something about precision. The sticks are pathetically small, which makes precision movements very difficult. I mean, for precision, you use D-pad, you know. And if you want to use a joystick, use it for everything else, you know. Hack and slash or whatever. And for that, it's way better than, uh, I don't know, D-pad. I like it way better. And if you want to play, you know, first-person shooters, obviously, that's another, like, you can play the actual in here. Whereas, you know, with the C-Stick, <laughs> come on, man. I want to play first-person shooters with that. Oh, I forgot there are no first-person shooters on the 3DS. Well, there are, but, I mean, it can't be compared with something like Killzone Mercenary, obviously. And, and that can be played fairly good with, you know, these controls. I don't have problem with that. And then, let's finish it off with triggers. Uh, again, I mean, these triggers are bad, no, no doubt about that. Vita triggers are way better, and the PSP is pretty much the same than on PS Vita, but they have this sharp, you know, edge, whereas here is like nice and round, and I prefer Vita buttons. So overall, I would mark it, you know, with my empirical senses, I would say uh, it is a draw, at best, you know, there is no, no clear winner in here.
Next, he's talking about games, that he was only interested in Uncharted Golden Abyss, and that it is not worth to buy it just because of this single game, and that other games have better ports already on PS3, and you should rather buy that because it's also cheaper. But it is a freaking PS3, bro. It's not portable handheld. It is a console. You can't take it anywhere. He showcased Need for Speed Most Wanted, which I found interesting because, yeah, the PS3 port is clearly graphically more impressive. But it is a full PS3 quality game running on a handheld. This is very impressive in my opinion. What's more, you cannot play this game even on a Switch, only on handheld PCs like Steam Deck. To talk about games, it's always very subjective, but there are still plenty of solid Vita exclusives worth trying out, like Google is showing you right now, Kills on Mercenary, Freedom Wars, So Sacrifice, Wipeout, Resistance, and on top of that, you got all the Golden Era PS2 ports, Ratchet and Clank, Jug and Daxter, Sly Cooper, God of War, and if this is still not enough, I'll tell you 10 homebrew ports that will surely make it a little bit more intriguing. GTA San Andreas, Vice City, 3, Max Payne, Conduit, Mass Effect, Dead Space, Heroes of Might and Magic, Galaxy on Fire 2, Sonic Mania, Battlefield, Alien vs Predator, Hollow Knight, I think that was more than 10. Vita has a great variety of native games and it can still offer a lot even in 2024. Do these games make Vita worth buying? I'll tell you later. It, it now, is. let's move on to next point he's talking about. That you might want to pick up PS Vita as a beefed up PSP. Because as you might know, it can play all PSP games. He says PSP is cheaper, which is true. You can repair it easier, which is also true. And you can also mod it easier. This is all correct. However, <laughs> there is always the however. It can play every single PSP game many even upscaled, plus you got second joystick that can be used for something like first person shooters. Repairability? I have fixed many Vitas, in fact one of my first videos was about how to replace a screen on a 1000 model, you can still watch it right here. For replacing battery, you just unscrew back cover and unplug it and replace it. For screen, yeah, you need to take it all out. PSP is older, thus it is built simpler, well unless you want to change UMD drive, then it gets pretty tricky. PSP hack is clearly way easier to pull off, cause back then they didn't really care about protection, but for something like 3DS it's not really that easier, or Switch, you know, you can't even mod that, good luck with soldering the chip onto it. With Vita they've cared a lot more about the protection, but with the latest browser method and Vita deploy, you can do all of it without PC, straight on your Vita, and it's fairly straightforward. As long as you follow a good tutorial. Then he says his Vita is hacked, he can play all the official Vita games, but he still didn't fix it because he cannot play PSP Minis. I still haven't fully fixed my Vita. It can play Vita and PSP games fine, but it still cannot play PSP Mini games. It's been a couple of years since I attempted to fix it, and at this point, I've given up. He's talking about PSP Minis, but PSP Minis are this in my opinion. And he is showing up uh, this game. This is not PSP Mini, this is PlayStation Mobile game. Here as you can see it works fine. So I can help you to fix your Vita for free. So all you need is to install one extra plugin, cause uh, you need it. So this is the plugin for your official games, but you also need this plugin for PlayStation Mobile games, because these are PlayStation Mobile games, so you need this plugin as well as this one for official games. Then you just go to the store, select the category, and here they are all nicely listed and you can choose any of them and all will be working absolutely fine. And you can thank me later. You're also gonna need PlayStation Mobile runtime package, I often forget about this because you need it for every other port, 
but you install it simply either via installing Vita DB Downloader and it will do all the process automatically or you install Crystal PSM, a useful link are in the description down below. Then he finishes up the video with saying PSP that you should rather buy 3DS, option. PSP or DS, PSP or DS, DS. but stay, stay away, away from, from PSP because it has nothing going for it, because it has nothing going for it nowadays. Uh, but man, if you finish I like the video like this, you have to expect to ruffle some feathers. My feathers wasn't exactly ruffled, I was just really laughing because uh, I often finish in videos and uh, you gotta like think about how to finish, you know. And I always approach it like from the neutral stance, from the middle ground, you know. So you say something like, if you like it, then good for you, enjoy it, have fun, but I personally think it's not worth it, or something along those lines. Then it comes off a little bit more, you know, not like a direct attack or something. So, is the Vita worth it, or should you rather stay away? The price has recently gone up, that's for sure, but you can still find good deals even in 2024. Here I found PS Vita Slim for 70 British pounds, or PS Vita 3G, that's the rare one, for 90 quid. These are not bad deals. New 3DS is way more expensive, around 150 quid. All these are around the same price, but nobody wants old one. And of course, PSP and DSs are for like 40, 50. This is also heavy dependent where about you live, what's the market in there, you know, if you live in Europe, USA or wherever else, the prices all differ. Yes, the initial asking price might seem higher compared to the others but he omitted the most obvious fact why people are buying vita nowadays clearly to mod it and to pirate all the games i'm not encouraging you to do anything i'm just stating the facts in here so you pay around 90 quid for vita plus sd2 vita memory card on top of that which is not a lot and that's it you are sorted no other expenses Whereas, if you buy, I don't know, Switch Lite, yeah, you can buy it for around 100 quid, you need games, obviously, and each one costs, well, it's not cheap. With 3DS, yeah, you can get all the games also for free, but they are different kind of games. And I believe 3DS is also still worth getting in 2024, as well as PS Vita, because it offers very unique experience for relatively cheap. Yes, you can buy nowadays some handheld emulator like Retroid Pocket 3 Plus or something similar, but they are all way more expensive and they are all using Unisoc Tiger T618 chip, which is not really a powerhouse and you still will not be able to play something like Killzone Mercenary or Need for Speed Most Wanted. Overseas of the skies, overseen. To the UK. So in the end it is still up to you and up to your personal preferences, what you like, what you want, what you need. In my opinion 3DS is worth getting as well as PSP, uh, I mean PS Vita, but PSP is also worth getting. But obviously it all depends, Switch Lite is also worth it, Odin 2 is also worth it. So it all just depends what exactly we expect from the handheld you are buying and you have to be aware what it can do, that's the most important part in my opinion. PS Vita has still a lot going for it even in 2024, in my humble opinion, and there are still new games coming out for it, don't forget about that, new ports, new homebrews, which reminds me you should subscribe not to miss any new releases. I would like to thank you for watching, thanks to members and patreons for support, peace out. Let's go to Zeus. Good kick some ass.